Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Last week I did a video demonstrating a new feature of Photoshop's Camera Raw called Super Resolution. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Super Resolution is meant to be used on an image that is either A, heavily cropped, or B, shot on a camera that was relatively low megapixels. When you have an image that is heavily cropped, you're limited by what size print you could make from it. And this is where you would use something like super resolution to increase the resolution of the image so you could create a larger print with it. Now, there are a lot of different applications on the market that do this. Most notably is one by Topaz Labs called Gigapixel AI. And for those of you that have followed my channel know the past year, year and a half, I've done several videos on Gigapixel AI. Well, I thought it would be interesting if I did a head-to-head -head comparison. We'll take the same image, run it through super resolution, and we'll take another, that same image I should say, and run it through Gigapixel AI. Now I have the image here in Lightroom, and I have it in Lightroom because I want to show you I did a significant crop on it. So it really was a high resolution image at one time, but I cropped it down to 1,796 pixels by 2,692 pixels. And I should have did the math ahead of time, but I think that's around four and a half to five megapixels. Now I did do some processing in it in Lightroom. You could see I did some basic processing. And what I didn't do is I didn't do any sharpening and I didn't do any luminance noise reduction. I just did some color noise reduction, the default value of 25. I kind of want to see if specifically super resolution like enhances the noise because we know, or those of you that have are follow my videos know that Gigapixel AI has noise reduction built in. So I don't think it will be an issue there. So we're going to send this image into both of those applications. Now, both of them, of course, Photoshop works as a standalone application. So does um, Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI. And both of them, of course, work as plugins in Lightroom. But if I open, and they both read RAW files. If I open the RAW file into Photoshop, it of course will open up into Camera Raw, which is what we want. But if I open the RAW file up into Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI, it will not recognize the Lightroom edits unless I use it as a plugin. And when you use it as a plugin, it doesn't load raw files. It will load a TIFF file. So I hope that made sense. So if I use Gigapixel AI as a standalone product and load this raw file into it, it won't recognize the Lightroom edits. So I would have to use it if I wanted to read those Lightroom edits, including that crop, I would have to use it as a plugin. So to try to make everything equal is I exported this image twice from Lightroom. Each of them are TIFF files and they're identical. So in Gigapixel AI, I have the TIFF file open up in it. And in um, Photoshop, which essentially now is Adobe's Camera Raw, it's open there as well. Now I want to make note here, and I mentioned this in that video where I introduced super resolution that again, I'll have linked in the description below this video. I mentioned in that video that super resolution is only available in the full non filter version of camera raw. Meaning if you have an image open up into Photoshop and you go up to the filter menu and down to camera raw, you won't find super resolution there. You have to open an image directly into Camera Raw. Then you'll find Super Resolution. And to get to it, all you need to do is right click right on the image and go down to Enhance. When you do that, you'll see that there's one checkbox, Super Resolution. It's as simple as that. Just make sure that checkbox is checked, then click Enhance. So there's really no control here. You're just doubling the length and doubling the width of the image and that in effect quadruples the megapixel size. So down here you'll see in the film strip we now have two images. This is the original image you can see at the bottom it's 1797 by 2692 4.8 megapixels. Next to it is our enhanced image. It's 3594 by 5384 
19.4 meg megapixels. So there is our super resolution image. Now, by default, Camera Raw saves this as a .dng file. But I think most people, when they send an image through super resolution or they use Gigapixel AI or any other app, they're using it because they want to print it. And typically you would print from a JPEG uh, directly or you would send that JPEG to a professional photo lab for them to print it. So I'm going to open this super resolution image up into Photoshop. And then from Photoshop, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And then we'll compare JPEG to JPEG. So we're trying to make this as much of an apples to apples comparison as possible. So I'm going to go up to File, down to Export, Export As. And we're going to save it as a JPEG with 100% quality. I'm not going to adjust the width or height at all. So it's the full scale, 100%. We're going to convert it to sRGB, though. And we're going to export this. It's going to be exported to the same folder. And remember, I mentioned that Adobe Camera Raw creates a DNG file. And you can see it's right there. That's our image in a DNG version. There's the original TIFF file that I opened up into Photoshop's Camera Raw. And we'll just save this. So it's saving it. And now I'm really done with Photoshop now. Um, it's When I go to close, it's going to ask me to save it. But it's already saved enough, so we'll click Don't Save. Now we'll deal with Gigapixel AI. Now, again, I have that same exact image opened up into Gigapixel AI. Now, right off the bat, Gigapixel gives you a lot more control. Um, with super resolution, you only get 2x, twice the resolution. Here, I can make it smaller. I could go 2x, 4x, 6x, or I could just put in my own multiplier. So I can make it 10x, 20x if I want. Um, I also could come in and just put a specific width in that I have in mind. And it will be proportional. It will adjust the height accordingly. Or I could put a specific height that I want in. Again, it's proportional. It will put the correct width in when I do that. I could crop it here if I wanted to. And as far as that, we'll stay with the 2x because we're comparing apples to apples. And we have four different modes, uh, AI modes. The standard mode uh, is meant for most images. And you can see that whenever I just move it slightly, it's going to generate a new preview. So it has to do this every single time. Uh, but just looking at it, because there is noise reduction built in, and if you look in the original image on the left, and I'll zoom in in post-production so you can see it, there is a significant amount of noise in the background of this image, and it's cleaned up perfectly in the processed image. So that is an advantage to, at least so far, we'll look at the JPEGs in a minute, but that's an advantage to um, Gigapixel AI. Now we'll go over and look at the other modes. Architectural mode is meant for real estate photography or cityscapes, something like that. And I have all four of these modes, by the way, set to auto, so it's automatically uh, putting suppressed noise and remove blur on a specific setting that it feels is good for this image. Now, right here with the architectural mode, it looks a little sharper. It did remove most of the noise, just like the other ones. So it's as far as noise reduction, it's identical to standard. It seems to be a little sharper, though. Compressed mode is meant for JPEGs. Uh, JPEGs usually are compressed, and when you compress an image... Uh, there's often what they call artifacts, JPEG artifacts, you might have heard. And this will help um, suppress any artifacts uh, on a compressed image. And this actually does look sharper than standard mode as well. Of course, I could come in and move sliders around and do it myself. Now, art mode is meant for what it means, art. So if you have a drawing or a painting, something you've done or something you've done digitally or something scanned, um, you'll probably want to use art mode. Now, as far as the modes are concerned, I could go to standard mode because it's a standard image. It's not really any of the other three. And I could come in and try to move around the sliders, remove more blur, uh, suppress less noise. Maybe that'll make it a little sharper. But you know what? I'll just go to architectural mode. It, it looked a little sharper and the noise reduction was fine. And I'll just leave it there. I could, again, come in and move those sliders around. You also have some additional settings. If you do uh, usually art, Sometimes you'll have colors bleed, um, especially reds on greens and things like that. You would flip this switch, and hopefully that will take care of that. Also, if you have a person in the image, uh, typically you don't want their skin sharpened as much. Uh, so you would uh, turn on face refinement, and it will recognize the person in the image, and it will make sure that it doesn't 
enhance anything you don't want to enhance like pimples and things like that. But I'll, I'll just stay with the straight architectural mode. So you can see though in Gigapixel AI, there's a lot more uh, options here uh, to either confuse you or to hopefully uh, help you create a better enlargement. So we'll click save image. And when it does that, I'm going to again save it as a JPEG with maximum resolution. Um, I'll leave that same file name. We'll save it to the source directory and we'll use that color profile sRGB because that's what I used when I exported the Photoshop image. So we'll click save. Now, one thing about Gigapixel, it takes a long time to save. So it's going to take a little while. So I'll pause the video and we'll come back once it's fully saved. Okay, it's fully saved in Gigapixel AI. I'll just close that down. We'll minimize Lightroom. We don't need that anymore. Now here are the two folders I mentioned. Uh, in the first folder, the Photoshop folder, the TIFF file is the original file. The JPEG is our exported image and the DNG file. Over here we have our exported JPEG and the original TIFF file. So what we want to do is we want to compare the JPEGs. All right, so we'll open that up and there is our Photoshop JPEG and we'll open this up. And there is our Gigapixel JPEG. We'll put that on the right and we'll try to look at them side by side. And uh, the Gigapixel one is sharper, uh, definitely just a little bit sharper and there is um, no noise in it. So I'm gonna blow this up so you could get a better view. Uh, first I'll blow up the uh, Photoshop version. Then I'll blow up the gigapixel version and you could decide which one you like better but you know really they both did a really good job if you ask me so um i think gigapixel because it's more versatile and you know if you're a wildlife photographer and you're off, often cropping a lot and you often will be shooting at higher isos and things like that gigapixel might be the better choice whereas if you're a travel photographer just you know uh taking images from your travels, your vacations, your holidays, things like that. You're probably not cropping quite as much. And if you do the odd crop here or there, I think Photoshop works great. You could use that and not have to invest in Gigapixel at all. So that's my comparison. It was I tried to make it as apples to apples as possible, but it was kind of difficult to do. But either way, I hope that helps you decide which application would work best for you. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.